Hello, this is Marvin Blotfelty. I'm a hydrogeologist and well driller from Arizona, here with another industry connected video from the National Groundwater Association. And today I want to talk about the theory versus the reality of how groundwater flows into a well while we're pumping it. And this is something that is not to uh, scoff at theory, theory is a good thing, but to um, take it a step beyond just the theory, but what really happens. And uh, so I think that's that's helpful to do. And I've got some uh, some videos here that uh, or some PowerPoint that may help uh, to explain this to you. So I'll share my screen. And this diagram is similar to one we see in many textbooks where um, if you have a homogeneous and isotropic aquifer, where that's to say groundwater flows equally in every direction and the entire aquifer is made out of a single material, not different stuff. Then you might have flow lines like this. So what this represents, we have the pumping well here in the middle, draw down cone to it. And these solid lines that are curved here are called equipotential lines. They are lines of equal water pressure. And so the water flows at right angles to those, and you can see these curved paths as it enters the well. And this is how water would actually literally flow in a homogeneous and isotropic aquifer. And it flows in accordance with, there was a clever guy back in the 1800s named Darcy, Henry Darcy, and he made this little uh, statement here. Uh, I don't know if he ever said this, but he might have. Q, which is flow, I don't know where they came up with all these letters, but uh, at any rate, Q is flow, that's the gallons per minute coming out, equals permeability, we call hydraulic conductivity, that's K, multiplied by the gradient, that's the difference between the static water level and the pumping water level, multiplied by the cross-sectional area, the area that, you know, as water flows through it going to the well. Well, this is, this holds true for a pumping well, and so, um, we can we can keep this simple relationship in mind, and of course we we respect Henry Darcy because he had impressive sideburns, and uh, anybody with sideburns like that must know what they're doing, right? So so let's switch now from the theoretical world to the real world. Here's something closer to the real world. <coughs> this is not a homogeneous aquifer. <coughs> it's made of different stuff, different layers. <clears throat> and it's not, a, not an isotropic aquifer because groundwater will flow horizontally much easier than it can flow vertically. And so this is real world. And so if we pump this well and we have a little drawdown, then we're going to have water be produced. And we can see we have our you know example well here with uh, several different uh, screened intervals and, and they're going to each receive some water. And that water will flow to them more in straight lines, not in, with these curved lines because of this not being a homogeneous and not being an isotropic aquifer. But the other thing that will happen here is the amount of water that flows from each of these levels is in accordance with Darcy's law. So that's the hydraulic conductivity, the permeability of that layer multiplied by the gradient in that layer multiplied by the cross-sectional area of that layer. So the, the thing that can be different is the hydraulic conductivity will be different in some of these, and so will the, um, the gradient, because the individual layers might not all have the same static. We're showing a single static water level. Top layer may have that level. Next layer may have a slightly different layer, le level and so on. And so we have things that will change. And so as we change our pumping rate, let's pump a little harder and get more drawdown here. Now these arrows may change in terms of how how much they proportionally provide uh, to the to the well. So the middle layer, for example, may have provided 50 gallons per minute. And after we pump harder, now it might provide 40 gallons per minute, and most of it comes from the the other two layers. You know, things like that can change. And we know that they can because we measure it. In, and when we do flow profiles in wells with spinner logs or with dye tracers, we can we can measure this stuff. And uh, 
And we also see that the water quality changes when we pump at different flow rates. And we can even uh, we can do a step rate test and pump at these different flow rates and catch a water sample each time. And we'll see that the water quality does alter as we have different pumping water levels. And so this is reality and it's good for us to know because there's times where if we do additional work, maybe additional development on one depth interval, it may improve that depth interval and may improve the potential for the well to make more water. But at a given pumping rate, we may not see any, any result from that. It may, it may be un, unmeasurable in any improvement. And so we wanna keep that in mind. So that the potential water contributions is impacted by these variables of Darcy's law. So the hydraulic conductivity, of course, is one. The gradient of each individual depth interval is one. And then there's other things, of course, we can have clogging in a specific depth interval, not throughout the entire screen, but we can have a depth interval that had a biological clogging problem or a scale growth of some sort. So we have, or, or maybe the original wall cake was not fully developed. And so we have a problem there. So there's a number of different things that can go on. They're hard to measure, they're, they're, uh, but we know that they're out there in reality. So as we're working a problem in a well, we can, we can have an understanding of them and, uh, and kind of react to them as we encounter them. I will just tell you that, you know, remember that theory is a, is a good thing and accurate, but the real world conditions can drift off of that. And um, even though our theory in hydrogeology accounts for a pure situation that doesn't always happen, it's the best that we have and it allows us to reasonably explain what goes on in mother nature. With that, thank you very much and I will talk to you next time.